So, hello you guys again. I hope you had a good lunch. Um, here is Frank. He's going to introduce us about the RangoDB, a new like, multi-topic multi, um, uh, uh, database. <laughs> How to work with graphs. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, my name is Frank Zeller and uh, I want to talk about ArangoDB, as Perry has uh, told you, which is an open source multi-model database. But I also want to talk about a project um, and that really is some kind of some kind of pet project Lucas and I are doing. Um, namely, we want to investigate ways to actually display graphs in a nice way, large graphs. Um, I mean, you all know presumably that there's gay fee to, to do that and things like that, but um, what we would like to, to achieve in the next months or so is to have some nice interface to um, look at graphs uh, of authors. I mean, we all heard that talk uh, in the morning about the uh, database of, of articles and, and proceedings. Um, and we want to display that in a nice way. And um, I just want to show you some of the things we have done so far, um, some of the tools we have used, namely D3. Um, there will be a talk about um, Sigma.js, which is an alternative to display graphs. Uh, and I must say I'm very excited to, to hear that, to see um, how is that different from, from D3. Okay, so that's the plan. Okay, just very briefly, uh, what is RangoDB? RangoDB is a document store, uh, meaning that you can store various kinds of JSON documents in it. Um, you don't have a schema like in a relational database, uh, but you do have relations, um, making it um, a multi-model database, so to say, because you can also um, use these relations to generate graphs from it. Um, so unlike, I mean, unlike Neo4j, it's not written in, in Java, so you cannot embed that into your program or, or things like that. It really is a standalone server, and you have various clients, so you have a Ruby client to connect to it, you have a Java client to connect to it, but it's not embeddable. It's a standalone program. Um, which you can access using HTTP and JSON. So basically, in principle, you could even use Bash to access it and curl, I mean, if you like. Um, it has a built-in JavaScript engine, so it uses V8 to uh, process JavaScript, and you can extend your, or you can write your algorithms dealing with graphs or other stuff in, um, in JavaScript using V8. So very briefly, document databases, what are document databases? Um, I mean, the name is somewhat misleading. I mean, basically, it's, it's a structure you are storing in, in your database. And that structure is either atomic, so it could be a number, a string, um, a f f yeah, float, a boolean, a null value, things like that. Um, or you can have lists of such things, or again, embed sub-documents into it. Uh, that makes it more flexible than the traditional um, approach using by relational databases. Um, it has all the advantages and drawbacks of not having to normalize your data or denormalize your data. So, um, what's the data we are looking at? Um, that's the same data, the DBLP, Computer Science Bibliography, uh, from the available, for instance, from the University of Trier. Uh, basically, that is some large XML file um, containing around three million publications. Um, so, and we wanted um, with a kind of different approach than uh, the talk uh, this morning. So, we wanted to to use that to see what could we do to display that. I mean, using that as a data data set. I mean, it's clear you can't possibly display three million nodes on, on, on a computer screen. I mean, that uh, would be ridiculous. Um, so and we, we started out, and um, these are the very first things I, I wanted to show you. And um, so let's see, how does it look like? And maybe that's too small. Um, so basically, a typical, 
a typical entry in the database is um, normally a publication of some sort. So I think, yeah, that's, that's more readable. Uh, so for instance, um, what you get is the title, um, a type, so that, that's currently an article in a proceeding. Um, you get that cross reference, and you have seen that uh, this morning, so that's, that should be clear. And the, um, and the list of authors, I mean, that currently has just one author. Um, okay, that one has more. And, uh, and there you see, in some sense, the advantage of having a document, so you don't need like in a relational database, um, create some uh, table to, to make an end to end relation. Um, you just put it in. And the, I think the main, the main effort in that database is really to get the names right. I mean, that is where uh, I think the most effort lies because uh, people tend to change names. It's unclear how to translate certain names to, to Latin <coughs> characters. Um, and that's basically what, what the people uh, at that project have done. Um, they use, they, they try to normalize all the author's name. Um, if you look at that, it's kind of strange because it only contains the authors as sub -documents. So there will never be a document saying I'm an author and I'm born there and I live in that and that. So the authors are really just names. So what Lucas and I wanted um, to do is to get some relation between authors. So, so two authors are related if they have written a book together. Um, and we want from there to investigate that a bit more. And, and uh, Lucas has done some stuff uh, with link prediction. So if, let's say, Peter and I have written a book together, how will, and um, I don't know, you and Peter have written a book together, how likely is it that we both write a book together? I mean, um, that's clear that there are other applications in, in, in um, I don't know, shop systems or things like that. I mean, uh, that should be, be clear, but um, that's what, what we would like to investigate here. Okay, so now I have to, yes, I have to admit, I, I will like to try to do some live demos, and as always with computers and live demos, it can be a challenge. Okay, so that data structure is not that helpful because um, the authors and the cross references, I mean, you have no way to get to the other thing. So what, what you need to do is basically to transform that into a graph. So you have your articles and you have your persons or authors or whatever, and uh, they are connected by an edge saying I'm the author of, or I'm uh, the publisher of that proceeding, or I'm the editor of that article, or you could even have, I mean, the graph is not necessarily b partied. So you could also have um, the proceeding and the article in the proceeding. And then you would have an edge between two publications, so to say, saying I'm within that proceeding. Um, so for us, basically, um, edges and vertices are documents. And there's a relationship between um, vertices defined by an edge. Okay, so that graph would, in principle, then look like that. So, so you start with a person. You have an edge saying, okay, uh, I've written that, that um, article and that was published in this proceeding. And that person is the editor of, of that. Okay. So what does that mean for, um, how are we going to store that? So basically, the idea is that we store everything as documents in ArangoDB, um, and then use some interface to access that and uh, create the graphs from that. And how is that going to work? Well, so now I will try, first of all, to get that to work. So. Uh, so we started with these raw data from, um, from the uh, DPLP project and created some um, documents, namely the articles and um, the persons. So basically our vertex set is now a collection of documents um, containing um, the articles, the proceedings and the uh, corresponding persons and the edge set is a description of the relationship between these documents. 
Uh, so we can have an edge saying, okay, I'm the author of that uh, article and most of them are also, so if I'm taking random numbers, I might eventually go to come to the, uh, okay, so this. Um, so, or we have the relation that uh, an article is within a proceeding. <coughs> so, basically now we have two collections containing documents, uh, one describing the articles and persons and one describing the relation between them. And what you can do now is you can now access that um, graph, which is just the top tuple of, um, um, of edges and vertices using various methods. So one is directly from within JavaScript. I, I told you that um, we are using V8 to access um, to, uh, to extend uh, the database with, with algorithms. Um, another one is um, via HTTP. So if you want to connect, let's say from Ruby or whatever, it will use an HTTP interface. Or, I mean, even uh, you can use that HTTP interface um, to use Blueprint or Gremlin or whatever you like to connect to that. Um, okay, so how does that work? Okay, so first of all, we could try to find, for instance, um, we could look for an article containing um, finite and neural in its, in its title. And um, that will return, I think, two or three articles. And um, given the key of that article, we could just um, create a vertex from the corresponding graph. Okay, so that's the key, and that key is the same one you have seen this morning, so it's, mm, okay. I maybe should try to press the correct button. So let's take that conference paper um, and create a vertex and you can basically then ask, for instance, what are my in and out edges? And um, okay, so let's try the in edges. It's empty, so um, that article has no subarticles. Okay, let's try the out edges, and we end up with uh, four out edges. And now you could use <coughs> normal um, JavaScript methods to say, okay, I want to know. Let's say, I want to see what are the corresponding in vertex vertices for that. Mm, and, um, and you get the corresponding in vertices. And I mean, you could even, to make that a bit more convenient, um, just define um, some methods on the array prototype so that you don't have to type the map function again. I mean, that would make it much more readable. Uh, so instead of doing the um, edge, as you in doing the map functions, you can simply apply the function to the, to the array and get the corresponding vertices or ask for the properties of, of that. And um, then you see that there are three different authors for that article and the proceeding in which it appears. Um, so that's very similar to the way you would do that in Gremlin. Um, so um, if we go to Gremlin and I have to admit I'm better it's copying things from here. So, so basically Gremlin is based on blueprints which is an abstraction layer for graph, graph databases. So you can put in whatever you like, Neo4j, OrientDB, something else, Postgres, whatever. Um, so all you need to do is define a configuration, a client, and um, then you can get, okay, then you can, um, so what have I done wrong? Ah, I didn't, I missed to define that. Um, so you can, again, as, in, as before, just take the key, get the corresponding vertex, and play around with Gremlin to 
um, see what, what's in here. So it's, again, hmm. no, I should learn to type. Um, so it's V, M, no, not VM. As I say, ah, I know. Yes, that's, that's one problem with the Mac. The delete button. So if you press Control D and you're used to having it deleted, it, it doesn't work. Um, so I always fail for that. Um, and again, I mean, that's the out, ed, uh, the out vertices. And you could ask for, for instance, for the um, properties, or you can take the, I mean, that's now again the same result as before. Um, and, and you could ask for the out edges um, and again ask for the, for the map and so on. So that, that's quite straightforward to ask for um, the corresponding um, stuff. So we've done that, we've done that. Okay, what else is there? Um, basically being a document database, um, Arango has a sort of query language. It's not SQL because um, you need some better support to query lists and subdocuments. I mean, if you if you look at uh, something like JSON IP, which is so to say the equivalent of SQL for JSON documents, and you will see that it is quite um, similar and um, it's a textual representation of what you want to do, like like SQL. Um, so, for instance, uh, I have to make it a bit smaller. For instance, if we want to know uh, how many authors are really working together quite a lot, then we could, for instance, ask, um, give me all the um, edges containing the co-authorship, and I want authors which have, at, mm, let's say, 30 um, of these, and you will, s you will see, mm, okay. Okay, what have I done wrong? Okay, let's maybe I'll use the one. Hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, so let's. I've put in the query in here. Co authors. Um, so basically, what we want to do is we want to get all the, the edges from the co-author relationship um, where our count is, let's say, 30, we want, no, not 300, that would be way too much. And we want to return that. Oh, sorry. So, Basically, that will give us the authors which really work together quite a lot. So we have now articles with more than 30 co-authors. I mean, it's kind of strange to have such articles. You would expect that um, normally there are quite less of them. Um, okay, let's, let's move on. I want to come to the... Um, so one last thing before I can really show you the... Um, these three stuff and, and um, how to do that. So um, basically what you, what you would like to do is take an author and traverse its uh, neighbors and display that. Um, so you can easily define um, traversals and that's, I mean, that's not that different, I assume, from, from Neo4j or OriantDB. Um, basically what you could do is um, you say what you want to, uh, to do, uh, so what, what's my edge source, what's the collection, where I store my edges, uh, what strategy do I want to use, do I want to go breadth first, depth first, um, do I want to follow in edges, out edges, or um, any edges, in that case we want to follow any edges, uh, and how deep do I want to go. Um, in that case, what we want to have is um, unique edges, but not um, we want, do want to, to, to touch um, vertices even if, if we have them touched before. So, so we are going, if, if there, we have such a diamond, then basically we want to have the lower one, um, even if we take the left root and, and not the right root. And that's basically all you have to do. You define your, 10 minutes, yes, thank you. You define your config file, do that, and 
um, execute that in, in the engine and I'm just doing that. So, uh, and and what, what it will give you is um, basically now a list of vertices saying, okay, these are the articles, these are the persons, and these are the relationships. And if you now go to um, something like these three, you will see that uh, you could use that um, to um, to display all the uh, vertices uh, in a nice way. So D3 is a library for displaying data in, in various formats. And uh, I will hurry up and show you some other formats as well. Um, but the basic idea that is for displaying a graph-like structure, you could always use um, this so-called force layout. So, so basically all the vertices have a pull towards the center and the repulsion against each other, and they are restricted by the um, by the um, edges connecting them. So if I, I mean, if I pull that, it will presumably not not have any impact. But if I start pulling that, it has quite a lot of force in it, and it will start dragging the other things around. Um, so that gives you a very nice layout. But I mean, it's clear if if you have 500 of these, it's it's unusable. I mean, that will be way beyond uh, things where you can, can do stuff. Um, okay, that's the graph for displaying um, the raw data. So, so everything which is red is now um, a person. Everything which is green is either a proceeding or an article. Um, and depending, no, it's either an article or a proceeding and blue means that's a an, that's an proceeding. Um, and I mean that the colors are completely useless. Uh, it's just to to give you an example. So what I want to show you very briefly is how um, that works in D3. No, I don't want to show. So the very so basically D3 works like jQuery. So you. You end up with something saying, okay, I want to call that data from somewhere else, that's this line here, um, and um, as soon as the data has loaded, do some callback. And that callback is now quite easy, so it sets up an uh, scalable vector graphics and, and things like that. But the main, really, the main um, function is this part here. Uh, so you give these three a list of all the vertices and um, later on all the edges you want to display and say, okay, um, now um, the strange part is you say, I want to select all circles I have, which is none. Then you say, okay, enter the new data and then comes an enter and an exit sec a section. So it's a, in some sense the other way around than you would expect that. I mean, you would expect it to say, here's the data and then um, do something with it, uh, but instead you first select everything, which is nothing, then you put in more data to it, and then you have two sections saying, okay, what to do with the data that is unused currently, and what is to do with the data which is used, uh, and that's the enter and the exit section. So basically you say, okay, put in all vertices, um, put in the uh, circles, uh, you can define um, color and so on, um, and then you, s you have to say, okay, and I w want to use a layout for that. Okay, so what we've done next is um, we've taken the same vertex set. Um, we have restricted that to the, um, to the authors. And instead of having the relation, I'm the author of that book, we now have a relation, I'm a co-author. So I've written a book <laughs> with someone else. And if you take the, um, the graph now, um, you can, can see ba basically that's, um, that's the number of co-authors co um, from 1973 on. And you can easily say, okay, and I want to see the um, development over time. And, and you, as you will notice, I mean, it kind of uh, there are kind of clusters to that, um, so people who write together and, and people who don't write together and are only connected by, by some intermediate uh, authors. So our, and, and you can see, I mean, if I, if I let that run to, 
2013 it will be very unreadable. Um, so our idea now is, I mean, we've played around with, with magnifying that, but that's not helpful. Our idea now is that basically what you have to do is you have to cluster things together. I mean, you have to find clusters of authors which are, are tightly related, create a super node for them uh, in the, the visual representation. And then if you go with the mouse to that super node, it should expand and other things should collapse so that you always have, have a restricted number of nodes available. And that should give you some way to um, explore the, the graph in a natural way. So you can navigate around that um, graph in a, in a natural way and saying, okay, I want to, to look at that cluster and then it should pop up and uh, everything else should basically collapse uh, and you can move on to, to the various things. Um, so as very last uh, representation, uh, D3 is the um, nice advantage that you can use quite a lot of, of um, graphical representations for your data. So um, instead of, of using that um, standard graph, you can also have um, some sort of, um, let's say, connections between the authors. Again, I mean, that are all the authors of the previous um, graph, which eventually have written something together. And now instead of, of moving the vertices around, they are fixed. Um, and, and you can basically say, okay, I want to, to see how, I mean, you can see that, that now there's someone connecting basically all the others up to a certain year and not much changes there over time. So he's some kind of um, very a communicative person, so we could try that with another another person. And um, I mean, here you see it's it's quite quite different from uh, from the layout before. And um, it's not to us not clear what what a good representation really looks like or should look like. And therefore, I'm I'm, I'm very look I'm I'm looking forward to the talk this afternoon uh, where people I mean that's a pet project, uh, but in the talk this afternoon people um, are trying to do that. I think for the uh, web and, and really already have some ideas, so um, it will be very interesting to see um, what kind of ideas they had. Um, and yes, what else? Let me just finish. Um, okay, what is what else is there? I mean, if you are interested in that, um, Lucas has implemented quite a lot of al other algorithms like shortest paths or or various measurements for um, uh, for the vertices, and again, I mean, these are still um, single-threaded implementations. So, I mean, I'm I'm very keen to look into the um, signal um, idea this mo from from this morning, which allows you to to do that in parallel. Um, uh, and I mean, you can find the, the stuff with the predict uh, link prediction there. Um, yeah, otherwise, if you are interested, um, just send us a Twitter message. If you have say, I have the perfect idea how to display uh, large graphs, just send us a SketchUp and, and uh, we will try to get that running in D3. Um, yes, and that basically, I mean, I finished my time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So time for one very fast question. One very fast. Yes, you were the first one. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, I'm. Have you heard of iFlow? Hmm? So iFlow. iFlow is a way to, I mean, plot uh, really large, mm -hmm. big ball of mud, and deterministic, uh, and you can extract a feature from, from the graph. Uh, iFlow methodology for graph representation. Uh, my question is why JSON? Why JSON? Um, uh, well, maybe I have a, a more specific question. How do you store the date in JSON? Yeah. Yes, why JSON? Um, that's always a good question with, with document stores. And um, <coughs> the point is that JSON is a format which really is available everywhere. So dep it really doesn't depend if you are using PHP. Ruby, Java, I mean, it's in some sense the smallest or the biggest common denominator. Uh, I mean, you, if, if you come from Java, you will say, ah, what a mess. I mean, 
uh, how do you do that? Um, no, I mean, if you really want to store dates, then yes, you can do that. And you have to define, um, or you can define some um, validator, some parser, and some formatter for it. And it will be stored as double or as string. I mean, that's up to you. Um, you have to define um, some way to say, okay, I, I want it in that format and I want it as string. But there is no um, restriction or constraint from the database to do that. Okay? Okay, so thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> and we go for the next